Hello, beautiful people. My name is Jennifer Diamond, and I live a whole food, plant exclusive, sofas free, gluten free lifestyle for health and well being, which gave me my life back, and it can improve your life too. I have reversed chronic disease, lowered inflammation, got off nearly all my medications, lost close to 40 pounds, and kept it off, and so much more. This channel is dedicated to sharing how I improved, mastered, and continue to heal so that you can do it too. Today, I thought I would bring you along as we make an easy summer slaw. Let's go. So things don't have to be complicated in the world of plants and it's summer here where we are in Arizona which means it's very hot and we like to enjoy things that are refreshing and simple and so I wanted to show you a very simple uh, recipe that I thought you might enjoy. You can use it you know just every day or you can double it or triple it and take it to plant um, uh, uh, you can take it to parties of any sort, uh, potlucks or whatever. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about carrots. Carrots, um, this is approximately the size carrot I used. And so um, I have shredded. You can use a box shredder or you, if you're going to be doing it, you know, in multiple um, uh, amounts, you can always use a food processor. Um, this particular carrot shredded weighs seven ounces, just to give you an idea. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and add that right in here. And you know what? I'm realizing that this is not going to be a big enough bowl. So let's get a bigger bowl and just, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> okay. This is the bowl. All right. So I think I was just looking at the design and I thought it was pretty, but nope, we need a bigger bowl because when you eat plants, at least I do. I tend to eat a lot of volume. All right, so back to business here. So we've got our carrots. And then the next thing that we're going to want to do is add in some purple cabbage. Yes, you could do green cabbage, but I'm also adding in some greenery right here. And this that you see here is actually the stems off of the broccoli. So I decided to do the purple cabbage because I thought that it would be nice in adding to more colors. Now, you can add more if you want. I currently have here um, about two to three ounces of the broccoli and about um, three ounces of the purple cabbage. So I, uh, I wanted to show you, let me move this aside. And I wanted to just kind of show you what I do. So, so you can take one of these stems and you can certainly just grate it like this. But what I find is if I just cut off around, you could probably even use like a potato peeler for this. But if I just cut off the edge, um, then it seems to be a little bit more tender. And you can use this in your uh, compost or if you're collecting to make your veggie broth, this would be great to do. And then this is the soft inside. And then this is the part that you could take your box grater and just go ahead and shred it really, really easily. And it's super, super soft. And um, especially if there are people in your family that think they don't like broccoli. Huh? This is a great way to kind of sneak it in because it just looks like shredded um, celery or carrot. So anyhow, I just wanted to show you that. And so getting back here, so we've got these beautiful colors. And then the next thing I want to do is add in an apple. And this particular apple is an envy apple. 
Um, you can use any apple that you like, but I tend to like the ones that are more firm. Now you can certainly cut this up and make tiny cube sizes, if you like, bite sizes, but I'm gonna go ahead and shred this. I like to wait till towards the end of the recipe to add the apple because once you start shredding it, oxidation happens and that is when you'll see it kind of brown. It's still fine, it just means that the air has hit the apple. So I didn't do this ahead of time, but I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. So just take the apple and just shred it the same way um, is how I'm going to do it today. So look, I wait till I get pretty much to the core and then I just will do the sides or the back side and just kind of go around the core. You could decore it ahead of time if you want, but we just want to shred this guy up. And there you go, see? And that didn't take any time at all. And of course, depending on how much apple and how big of a slaw you want or how much um, sweetness of an apple flavor you want, then you may decide to add an additional um, apple. I, for the sake of it, am gonna weigh this one just so that you know, because apples come in all sizes, don't they? And so this will give you an idea of what I'm using today. And so if you have little apples, you might want to use two. If you have big ones, you might want to use one to equal this portion. So let me grab um, the sink here. What I was going to say is let me grab a bowl, but then I wanted to rinse my hands off. And I'm going to go ahead and use my scale. I really enjoy this kitchen scale by Cuisinart. I'll link it below if you're interested. And um, while I'm getting this ready, I just want to say, Subscribe, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. You'll be notified when I go live or post new videos and give this a thumbs up, smash that like. I really could use your help in spreading the word. It really helps um, for me to get the word out more. And don't forget, leave a comment, let's chat. I love to chat. Tell me what your thoughts are and have you tried a coleslaw like this? So now I'm gonna go ahead and measure this apple in grams. Oh, this is, um, so right, ready to go, 256 grams. But I think we also wanted to do it in ounces, so I'm gonna also share 9.02 ounces. You could just say nine ounces, and that was one apple. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that apple and just dump it in here so that we are ready to go again and move the core. You could definitely take that apple core and add it into your veggie broth. Yes, you can. You could give it a little bit of a sweetness. You don't only have to do veggie scraps, just so you know. And then the last things, a uh, few, few last things that we wanna do is, um, you wanna add some lemon juice. Now, if you don't have lemon, it's okay, you can use lime, but you definitely want a citrus. I've never tried orange, I guess you could try orange, but I'm recommending lemon. And I'm saying the juice of one lemon is usually about two tablespoons, so you can freshly squeeze your own. Um, I happen to have this bottle of pure lemon juice ready to go, and it's already opened, so I thought that I would just do that. And the thing with the lemon is, it's to taste so you don't want too much if you're not a, a lemon um, lover and you don't want too little because you do want the flavors to melt and really incorporate especially with that apple and the oxidation so for this amount I'm gonna do two tablespoons and of course at the end whoops um, when you taste you can decide if you think you need any more but I also think um, that giving it an opportunity once you incorporate it to kind of sit an hour or so also allows the juices to change and that's another time to taste before you might add. So let me get some tongs so we can mix this up. Here we go. And you can use any tongs and just start to mix this up with the apple and the lemon and all of this stuff. Look at this coleslaw, right? 
such a simple summer slaw. And I really like calling it that because um, the sweetness of the apple makes me think of summer. <laughs> but you know, you can have it year round, of course. Okay, and so now that I feel like we mix this pretty good, we're gonna add a few more things. The first thing I'm gonna add is fresh dill. And I have dill here. I, whoops, I, I pre-cut some. And so you can just add as much dill as you want. This happens to be about a tablespoon of measured out um, dill. And I'm just going to throw that in there. What if you don't have dill? Well, that's okay. You can use a different herb. Just know that the flavor preference will change. Um, another thing that might be really good in here is mint, right? So you can try whatever whatever flavor you're you're going for and so I just mix that a little bit I like to do that um, after I add the lemon juice because if I and it probably doesn't matter but if I pour the lemon juice directly on it sometimes it gets a little um, you know like I don't want to say soggy but you know extra wet so anyways it it doesn't really matter it's just what I'm doing right now I'm giving it a toss and then the last item that I want to add is a little bit of crunchiness um, through some nuts. Now I, today, am going to be using these. These are um, pine nuts. And I, right now, pine nuts in the U.S. are really expensive. So if you don't have pine nuts, like, no worries. But this is a tablespoon of pine nuts. I like pine nuts because of the size of them and that they're a unique texture and taste. And so I'm just going to go ahead and add pine nuts. Now, you could also, and I'll just show you, these are my pine nuts that I am using. I got these um, at our Costco and so in the bulk it makes it a little less expensive but you could always use cashew nuts you can use walnuts you can use almonds you can use any nuts that you want um, but what I would say with the cashews walnuts or almonds is get them in a baggie of some sort or something and kind of crush them. You don't need to make them into a powder but having them kind of a smaller piece would be very nice and you could even put in two different ones, right? So we could put in pine nuts and cashews, or we could put in walnuts and almonds, or whatever mixture, or just keep it simple. And, um, and that's really it, and here we go. Right, simple summer slaw. So let's get um, uh, a spoon and let's give this a taste. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this right here in a bowl. And this is a great addition for so many different meals. I mean, you could certainly just eat this instead of a big salad, or you can add it as a dressing to a green salad. Um, you could put it on any kind of veggie burger if you wanted a slaw or anything like that. Um, and you know, just any, any way is the best way, right? Let me grab a fork and let's give this a try, okay? Oh my goodness, it looks so good, so refreshing. I'm looking for a pine nut, I don't see one. So maybe I might take one out of here just to have that. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. This is super sweet from that apple. No, mmm. Very crunchy, very refreshing. <laughs> I really like the flavors. Um, it's a little light on the dill, so I taste it very mildly. So if you want more flavor in the dill portion and you're using dill, maybe consider adding a little more. If you're fine with a mild flavor, I would keep it. Um, I love the pine nuts in it. Of course, I just had one in that bite, so it wasn't overpowering or anything. And, um, but what I originally tasted wasn't really lime. It was that sweet apple. And so that's kind of a treat. Um, you could also add other things to this, like raisins or any kind of dried fruit. I would just, if it's like big apricots or something like that, I would consider cutting them up into smaller pieces so that everything kind of matches the size of the nut. And that's a good um, way to follow or to consider when you're considering, well, how big should I have this? Well, raisins, you probably don't need to cut up, right? But 
If it's a big um, apricot, you might want to slice that up. And so anyways, I just wanted to say thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope that trying this summer slaw, this easy summer slaw is something that you will try to incorporate into your diet. And I just want to say, don't forget to eat your greens and give plants a chance. Take care, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.